In this video, we derive the relationship between the heat capacity at constant pressure and the heat capacity at constant volume for an ideal gas. Uh, the difference between the heat capacity at constant volume and constant pressure is particularly important when we examine the similarities and differences between the enthalpy and the internal energy. As a matter of fact, we have seen that if we track how either the inter internal energy or enthalpy depend on temperature, we get to graphs that look like this. Right, so here we have the function, either enthalpy or internal energy. This is the variable temperature. We see that uh, the enthalpy and the internal energy both increase with temperature, so you gain energy when you heat something up. Okay, but the variation is slightly different. And uh, it turns out that the slopes of these curves at any point are either the heat capacity at constant pressure for the enthalpy and then the heat capacity at constant volume for the internal energy. Also, uh, we note that the black line enthalpy should be above uh, uh, the, the uh, red line for the internal energy, and then the slope of the enthalpy line should also be larger than the slope of the internal energy line at the same temperature uh, for most substances. So here what we're actually going to do is, is see uh, how much larger is the heat capacity at constant pressure versus that at constant volume for an ideal gas. Okay, so let's try to see uh, how that works out. Okay, the way that we're going to do this is by examining the definition of enthalpy and finding ways to reformulate that uh, using those heat capacities. Okay, so we're starting from the definition of enthalpy, which is this one. Uh, we're going to do it in differential form. Okay, so that would be a differential of enthalpy, differential of internal energy, and then differential of PV. Now, we want to, starting from here, uh, try to figure out a relationship between those heat capacities of constant pressure and constant volume. But that is going to be relatively straightforward to do, because notice that what we have right there is that this really is differential of Q sub P, and that is really differential of Q sub V. And here, uh, notice that this is an ideal gas, okay? So what we're doing here will only apply to an ideal gas. Okay, if we have an ideal gas, then this is going to be nRT. Okay, PV is equal to nRT, that is the ideal gas equation of state. Okay, so uh, forging along here, right, Q sub P, now we can use this expression for the heats, and then find that that is simply going to be C sub P differential of T. Here we have C sub V differential of T. And here we just have uh, that expression. Okay, we assume that this is a closed system, so uh, there's no change in the moles of gas. And then we can take that N out of the differential. And then R is a constant. Okay, so we can take it out of the differential, and you simply have differential of T. Okay, notice that uh, everything is multiplied by differential of T, so you can uh, cancel it, it out. And you get to an expression that gives you the relationship between the heat capacities at constant pressure and constant volume, but of course we can divide this by the number of moles to find that there is simply the molar heat capacity at constant pressure, molar heat capacity at constant volume, plus R. Okay? Alright, so that is the relationship between the molar heat capacity at constant volume, constant, constant pressure, and the molar heat capacity at constant volume for an ideal gas. Okay, so typical values for these heat capacities uh, are as follows. For a monatomic ideal gas like argon or helium or again any ideal gas that has no internal structure, that means that it's just a single atom, or you're neglecting uh, uh, bonds and so forth, it turns out that CVM happens to be 3 halves R. Okay? And then CPM will be a value that is uh, R larger than that, so if you add R to this, this is simply going to be 5 halves R. Okay, so notice how this uh, beautifully exemplifies what we're seeing in this graph, right? The fact that the heat capacity at constant pressure, which is the slope of this line at any point, should be a little bit larger than the heat capacity at constant volume, which is the slope of that line at any, at any point. And as a matter of fact, the difference happens to be simply R for an ideal gas.